So you're working in Excel. You've got an if statement checking if the item is live and that formula spills down correctly. You just need to add another condition to check if the item is cancelable. So you use the AND function. And when you commit that, what's going on? It doesn't spill. Is AND broken? Let's find out in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. The problem is that AND isn't behaving as we might expect. We think we're providing a list of conditions and that AND is then returning whether all those items are true. So this is how we think it looks. Equals AND, open bracket, we've got our first logical and our second logical, and then we close that bracket and commit that. Therefore, that then returns true or false. And if we want to, we can then drag that formula down and it's working for all of those pairs of logical tests. But this isn't what AND is doing. Because if we type equals and, and select an entire range, and an entire range, it's not going to spill those values. Instead, it's looking at all those values in all of those ranges and finding out whether they're all true. So if one of these becomes false, then our and returns false. So and is ultimately an aggregator type function, a bit like sum. It only ever returns a single value. It looks at all of the values that have been provided and determines whether they all are true. The same is also true of the OR function. So equals OR, open bracket, we select all of those and it's going to evaluate everything in that range. So we now get true because it contains at least one true value. So AND and OR are actually more like SUM than logical functions because they aggregate all of the values together and return a single result. Let's look at one solution that I suggest you don't use. It illustrates how we can approach these kinds of scenarios, but it does become quite complex. We're going to use the map and lambda functions. So we'll start with map, open bracket, and we want to select the ranges of D7 hash, comma, E7 hash, comma. We then want G7 hash, I7 hash, and J7 hash. So they are all the ranges that we've used inside our formula. We're then going to use the lambda function and we're going to pass across each of these arrays. So we're gonna call these A, B, C, D, and E. We can call these whatever we like, but it's just easy to illustrate for this scenario. And now we use these variable names inside our formula. So rather than D7 hash, we can use A. Rather than E7 hash, we can use B and then so on and so on. So C and then D and then E. So now we can close our lambda and close our map and we can commit that formula and it now calculates the correct results because it's performing one calculation, but with map and lambda, it's then performing that calculation for each individual row. So that's one possible solution. The truth is that we don't need to use the AND function at all. We can simply use logic in our condition. So let's have a look at our first check, which is whether D7 hash is equal to live. When we commit that, we get the value of true or false. Our second condition is whether our cancelable column, so E7 hash, whether that's equal to N. And we now get two true or false values. If we multiply L7 hash, by M7 hash, we then get ones or zeros. One is where it's true and true, so therefore they're the values that we want to return. And in Excel, any number that's not zero is deemed to be true. So therefore, we can use this simple logic inside our formula. So let's edit our formula. So we don't need our AND function at all. We're gonna start with an opening bracket. So D7 hash, whether that equals live, then we can close that bracket and multiply that by our second condition. So that's going to check whether E7 is equal to N. And when we commit that, it now calculates true or false on a row by row basis and returns the results that we want. So we were able to achieve this without using the AND function. You've got to see this if statement that I've just written with the new check boxes feature. The question asks, are you human? If you check the box, it returns subscribe now. If you don't check the box, it returns subscribe anyway. So let's try this out. Check and uncheck. Looks like either way, you should be subscribing to our YouTube channel. So we've seen that we don't need the AND function. But here in this scenario, the truth is we don't even need the IF function. 
We're doing a logical test and if that's true, we're returning a number and if it's false, we're returning zero. But if our logical test is false, that will return zero and zero multiplied by anything will always be zero. So let's see how we can change this scenario so we don't even use our if statement. We're going to edit our formula and rather than if, we're going to start with an opening bracket. We're going to check whether D7 is live and then E7 is N and then we're going to multiply that with our result. And now when we commit that, we get exactly the same result out from Excel. And we didn't use an AND and we didn't use an IF. When working with logic in Excel, it's really easy to overthink our solution. Often, if we're working with conditions and then returning a number or a zero, we don't need an AND statement, we don't even need an IF statement. We can just use standard logic. So the next time that you get one of these scenarios, think through whether we even need to have an IF statement. If you're still watching, it means you must really like this video. So the next video you want to watch is this one because it's another awesome Excel video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.